Hello, this is Gerald Leonhardt, Futurist, CEO of the Futures Agency, uh, together with uh, Yuri van Geest today. Yuri is an accomplished writer. The latest book is, uh, that he has co-written with Salim Ismail is called The uh, Exponential Organization, and it's making quite a few waves, and we'll talk about that shortly. He's also the uh, Dutch ambassador for the Singularity University. And so what we're discussing today as part of this debate about exponential organizations and digital transformation uh, is the media, publishing, and entertainment business. Mm -hmm. uh, we both have quite a bit of background there. I used to be a musician, producer, a um, bunch of music startups, and, and this is actually how we met a long time ago. And so let's start with this whole idea of, of saying what is actually, what has become out of the media business, you know, going from physical products and terrestrial transmitters and, and TV towers, you know, to the internet and over the top. What are the key things that you see in the next five years? Yeah, so I think the media business is quite different from, let's say, 10 years ago. Uh, on the one hand, the business models are different. Uh, you, you make more money using, let's say, offline events or uh, spin-offs from your digital media uh, outlets. Uh, basically, the, the, the digital media itself or themselves are more for research or customer data points to aggregate that you can leverage using alternative routes like, for example, education. You can go into training as a media company. There's a blur blurry of boundaries there. Uh, you can use those research insights to create offline events and monetize that mm -hmm. instead of just the digital publication. C can we slice it up into media being entertainment and content and advertisement, because advertising is also yeah. media, right? Yeah. So if we talk about the product, mm -hmm. you know, or the service, mm -hmm. there are key trends, for example, uh, that everything is becoming fragmented. Mm -hmm. So I can watch anything I want over the internet. I have mm -hmm. everything on demand. Mm -hmm. There's a flood of content, mm -hmm. right? Uh, and then we have media advertising, which is becoming automated right? mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. using artificial intelligence mm -hmm. once again. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's a couple of challenges, I think, you know, the disembodiment of media, for mm -hmm. example, mm -hmm. the DVD used to cost 25 euros, mm -hmm. now Netflix is, uh, is 7 euros a month, mm -hmm. you know, for essentially any mm -hmm. movie, mm -hmm. right? so the, the margin is going, you know, it's just mm -hmm. collapsing. So what do you think is going to happen to media companies when that whole thing becomes from physical or from restricted environments like cable you know, to an open platform? Yeah, so I think what you see in most vertical markets is a trend of uh, technology, deceptive, then disruptive, then you have decentralization, democratization, demonetization, and yeah, that's, that's the end of the story. So that's also happening in media. That means that there will be a lot of consolidation. Uh, if you are a medium, uh, medium category publisher, you, you will be in deep trouble. If you are a niche, you might survive on, on a global scene, in a global scene. If you are large, you have triple A quality, you will consolidate power like New York Times, blah, blah, New York Wall Street Journal. Uh, so there will be a lot of consolidation at the, at the, at the top end, globally. Mm -hmm. If you are a local player, you will be increasingly in trouble because it will move towards a global playing field. You can already see that in, in, in young readers, mm -hmm. for example, or viewers. Um, if you have niche content, you might be able su to survive and to monetize it. If you can create your competitive advantage uh, on the global scene, that is. That's going to be harder. But isn't it the way that we had uh, giant media companies in the past, like the cable companies or Time Warner or whatever, or, or MTV or Viacom or whatever, dominating to a large degree, and now what's dominating is the what John Lee calls the siren service, you know, the giant things in the sky like Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Google, Alibaba, you name it, right? Uh, they are sort of running the show, and then we have these giant over the top organizations like Netflix who is not quite the same level and, of course, being more close than mm -hmm. all the others. But isn't that kind of replacing the old big guys with the new big guys? Yeah, to a certain degree that's true, uh, even though there's also disruption going on there, right? For example, you have Netflix and then you have Aereo, but it was, um, it was, di it was di discarded. And then you have, right now, Popcorn, Popcorn Time as a disruptor, so there's a lot of interesting innovation there happening, but I do agree with you that right now, if you look at the big players, yeah, it's, of course it's Google, Apple, etc., Amazon, and, uh, and Netflix uh, dominating the fields. Well, it's, you know, if you're looking at but Spotify I, I, or, mm -hmm. or Netflix, right, it's the same effect as an artist or writer or whatever, Netflix, Amazon, uh, Spotify, same thing, mm -hmm. you know, your individual amount per stream per use goes down from a lot, yeah. probably too much, to very little. 
And so that can only scale if you have six billion users. Or yes, that, that's true. Right? And so how do we get to the money there? Now the point is, it's, it's actually you talked about that yourself uh, 11 years ago, uh, with on music and uh, the future of music. So what will happen is, in most cases, that you at first you give away more value to your end users for a low price point. You get more customer data and uh, research and data points mm -hmm. that you can leverage using mm -hmm. offline events or concerts, whatever, or offline mm -hmm. events as a medium. So you have a different way to monetize your business. It's it's a more long-term view. More added values. Yes, too. yes. Mm -hmm. In which you at first have to give away a lot of stuff and then later on monetize it. Yeah. So I mean, let's talk about the flip side of this. I think this is doable, and mm -hmm. I've you know I've been looking at possible possibilities. And if you look at the new media companies like. Like for example, what the Atlantic is doing on Quartz, or you know, you can see this heading in this direction in journalism. But uh, let's talk about advertising because that's the other part of the equation. Right? Advertising is currently increasing at six to seven percent per year, so it's actually not declining; it's increasing. But the money is going to the new platforms to a large degree. So I always tell the publishers, "There's money here, but you're not getting it." Mm -hmm. uh, so what's going to happen with advertising, in your view, and and how can you be a part of that in the future and not lose out? Yeah, so I agree with you that most platforms will increasingly consolidate their advertising revenues like Facebook, uh, Google, etc. Uh, this will be a hard play for yeah, classical media companies to monetize because it will move away from, from their core business. Uh, the advertising business itself will become more real-time, more dynamic, more AI-driven than already today. It will become much more personalized than today. For example, what I expect that you can ask for higher CPM rates based on targeting on additional variables like uh, neurostates, uh, quantified self-sensor data outputs to personalize content, advertising and services increasingly over time. So you can, uh, you can monetize that at a higher rate as a publisher. I think there's two or three things you know, that, that you speak to that are uh, striking a chord with me. I mean, first, the, uh, the fact is that advertising is becoming content itself because it has yep. to be good, otherwise it, nobody wants to see it. Second, the metrics are completely transparent, yeah. so you get almost 98% or so transparency of what the money is actually doing. Right? Mm -hmm. uh, and the third thing is fragmentation. Yeah. So, uh, you know, 90% of the internet in uh, 10 years will be mobile. Mm -hmm. So that can be completely tracked, which is kind of scary for privacy things, right? But that's really going to change. But my view is that, uh, to, to wrap this up in a way, I think the media business has gone through the valley of death as I call it, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. coming out the other end now. Yeah. It's quite clearly going to be, you know, five billion people connected on mobile devices, mm -hmm. advertisers wanting to find an audience. There is money there, right? in my view. Mm -hmm. The media business could be very, very strong again in a few years after reinventing the, uh, the monetization model. I think I would like to build on that a little bit. I think it will move, move away from mobile over time because it will move into the environment, right? The Internet of Things, the yeah. wearables, the it will be in your car, it will be in your building, it will be in your home, in your, in your toys. So you, you see a fragmentation of touch points and devices over time, driven by the Internet of Everything. Um, so th this is going to be interesting. Because I, think I think the interface is essentially, as you say, moving away from the fixed box yes. into the environment, yes. so becoming invisible. Could be any wall, could yes. be anything, could be and any projector, more personalized. could be any, anything I wear on my iris, whatever, yes. right? So the mobile becomes essentially every surface. Yes. Yeah. And I think that that is extremely positive for the media companies. It may be creating all kinds of problems with humans, <laughs> you know, for their own interfaces. Having natural user interfaces is really quite different. Uh, like, you know, Microsoft is doing now with the HoloLens mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. those kind of things. You know, that's going to be extremely powerful and, and be vastly addictive, you can imagine. Mm -hmm. you know, so At first. Uh, if you're into that, I suppose it could generate lots of money. Anyway, it was nice to have you here, Yuri. Very We're welcome. talking about the future of media and the exponential organization. This is Yuri van Geest. I'm Gerd Leonhardt. If you want more information, please go to thefuturesagency.com. Thanks for tuning in.